Well, my name is Shakira Regoza. I own and operate Terra Preta Farm. It's a 20 acre certified organic farm in Edinburgh, Texas. We've grown, we've, we're moving from like one acre plots and three acre plots. And right now we're actually on 20 acres. Uh, we do some farmer's markets, CSAs, and we also have three years now um, been selling wholesale to some of the local markets in Texas. How did you access land? What were some challenges you faced? Um, we were approached by a landowner um, for our current property where we're at, that's 20 acres. She was actually looking for someone to farm it. Uh, she's out in San Antonio and we tried to help her clear it and get it ready for farming for several years. It was a long process. And at the time we were still living in Westville, which is about 30 minutes from, from the farm. So it was kind of hard on us, the commuting back and forth. And we asked her if we could just, you know, have some place to, to, to work there, to, if she would sell us like an acre to place a home. And she actually said, you know, I'm going to sell you the whole thing. I don't want to piece it. And that was, uh, we, we really weren't prepared financially to take on that extra property, but we felt like it was necessary because there's a lot of development in our area a lot of farmlands going toward subdivisions and we felt it was really important to preserve some area um, for farming and green space. So um, we weren't able to get um, financing through like a conventional lender or even through FSA. Um, so she actually is now doing like owner financing. So that's how we jumped in here. We um, thought it was a zoned agriculture there's another farmland in front and actually behind the property, it's farmland. So there's a lot of ranches mostly, um, some row crops being farmed. And so we just assumed that this was agriculturally zoned. We actually had to um, apply for a permit to put up some high tunnels on the farm. And that's when, when we went to apply, that's when we found out that it's actually zoned suburban residential. We had to apply for a variance with the Zoning Board of Adjustments to get a permit to place the high tunnels. We were not guaranteed that they would give us the variance. And actually we were trying to find other options around it, to find other um, wording in the code that would allow us to place it so we wouldn't miss our deadline. And we had some meetings with the city on that, um, with the planning and zoning department. And in one of those meetings, they actually mentioned to us that they think there might be some type of opposition, which was alarming because we were, we hadn't really spoken to anyone about it. And for them to say there was some opposition where we were concerned that there was very likely it would get denied. And we were just um, wondering who would be opposing it since it hasn't been really, it wasn't even like a public issue at the time. <laughs> so um, at that point, they mentioned that they would be sending out letters to the community members around. So in that process, like they would request input from the neighboring lands within a certain radius to get their input. And so leading up to that time, it was like, 30 days out, um, that time we started, we had to do a lot of work ourselves. We did it mostly ourselves. We didn't have anyone like lawyers, anyone to hire to help organizations. So we started reaching out to our neighbors um, and getting them to sign like a petition saying that they were in favor of us placing the high tunnels. And then we also reached out to our community of um, there were some CSA members, farmers market customers, um, and some friends uh, with the university that we worked with closely because they do some research on our plot, plots that we have here at the farm. So um, the local university professors um, and students also started a petition. So we got about 120 signatures going into the meeting. Um, we reached out to young farmers so our variance was denied the first time around. 
um we were really devastated everyone left the call like in shock it was just unbelief and disappointed and the city council and the mayor uh, eventually heard about all the calls and complaints about why they weren't letting these farmers place these structures on their farm so they it brought light to the issue to them and so they came out and visited the farm we had some zoom meetings there was some uh, uh, news crews that came out and covered the story um so that brought a lot of light to the situation and eventually they they said we could ask for a reconsideration so we found that we had to wait a month again. So going into the second meeting, they were already kind of, the board was aware of what we we're doing and the structures and they were able to um, brand us the variance. But it was a, I mean, you say three month long process. Um, we didn't get to use them that growing season. We had to put out the $400, um, a lot of meetings. And so all of that was uh, was very, very stressful, but uh, thankfully we were able to get, get, the, get the high tunnels. How secure does your access to land feel? Like, I feel secure that we're gonna be able to keep it just because we have the, the support of the, of the owner. Um, she's been pretty flexible with us, especially during um, the pandemic times when, when the, um, we had a really hard year. So um, I think if we were get, getting into trouble, um, like she would be understanding and be flexible with the payments right now. But I really would like to get into um, a, like a more secure loan with FSA, which I'm trying to, to work on right now. 